Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In this video, we are going to continue with the floor framing. Like I said in a previous video, I just have way too much content to try to cut these things down in 15 minutes. So we'll just make a multi-part. Hopefully that's not annoying to anybody. We're gonna leave most of this in real time, but we'll speed up some of it because, well, it's a whole lot more fun to watch it when it's sped up, in my view. Okay, so let's just kind of recap. We've got a Roseburg eye joist. The joist that we are currently rolling are two and three eighths LVL top and bottom flanges. And that's because of the long span from where I'm at. Noah's kind of down there in the middle, helping us flip them. And of course, water's coming off of it. It's been kind of chilly during this project. There's a few things that I just want to point out. As was shown in the previous video, these are very long joists, right? To actually flip these things up on the hill and get an accurate layout is a complete waste of time. I know because I've tried that kind of stuff before. <laughs> so when we got forklifts, oh man, life got easy. Instead, as you saw in the previous video, we brought all of these eye joists and put them into place. So they came off the pile into place and I cut them right over that chalk line. See that snap line on the top plates by me? That way I could cut as they grab the next joist. We stayed in motion. That was by far the most efficient way to do this. Only took us 15 minutes to set up the scaffolding. Anyway, I'm not gonna belabor that. You could just go see the previous videos. Here's just another look at the floor system. The garage goes side to side, the rest of the joists front to back. Up on top where Kyle's at, there's a better look at the interior walls that were framed so that the top of the eye joist is flush, there it is, with the top of the mud sill. So we slammed those right up tight to that foam. The foam goes from under the slab up the wall and then we actually filled in between the mud sill and that foam. So that's like, if you follow Steve Basic, uh, I think I'll put Steve's info in the description. He's one of my favorite people. Steve's an architect, uh, used to work with Joe Stebrick for many, many, many years. If you don't know those names, boy, hit a comment uh, below and I'll try to put a link. Anyway, try not to belabor these points. If you follow Steve, Steve has kind of the red line test where you want your insulation to be continuous. So it's underneath the slab, up the wall, over there where Kyle's at, and then it continues to the mud sill. Of course, our subfloor itself is gonna go on top of the joist, over the mud sill. After the walls are framed, then we're gonna drill out our Titans. Should be easy. Ah, look at that. Sorry. <laughs> Get a little bit of water on you. I hope that it's becoming apparent that it was, yes, totally worth the 15 minutes to set up the scaffolding. Now we can do a lot at basically waist height. Scatter joists, cut joists, roll joists, we'll add rim later, then we'll build guardrails, etc. And that just all goes way faster than walking the walls. Now here's real time footage of just rolling these joists. This is what it looks like if, if you were in my head. <laughs> I absolutely love the Passload XP nailers. I reviewed it for JLC. I had the uh, old Impulse nailers. Didn't find that they worked that well. That is not true of these Impulse nailers. I've been using them now for this kind of work, not for the high production stuff, but for stuff like this, where I don't have to drag a hose through the mud. I think since 2017, I reviewed it for JLC. Now, full disclosure, last year I started to partner with Passload. I want you to know that so that anything positive I say, you can take with a grain of salt. There is still a smell to the gas, you do have to pay for consumables like the fuel itself. I think that's worth it. The battery powered nailers that are on the market now, I've got a video on that. They're like five pounds more, which is ridiculous. This little nailer weighs about eight pounds. Anyway, enough of that. Roseburg Eye Joist LVL top and bottom flanges don't put too many nails when you attach them to the wall. Also, I'm using a three inch by 0.131 inch nail. Our engineer knows that because the thinner diameter is much less likely to split out. Also, notice that our end wall was framed tall. We're gonna slap our rim to the side. That's gonna fire stop it, saves us a step. It's a little stiffer. I think it's a little stronger. Does it matter? Probably not. It's just, we find it to be a little bit easier. Now, I got a hold of it. If you get on the ladder, I'm gonna have, holy cow, that's heavy. All right, you're good. Yikes. We got it. Okay, let me let Noah get out of the way and then we'll slide it down. I might have pooped a little, I'm not sure. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> nice and controlled. You guys, you guys are amazing. Thank you. I believe in miracles. Yeah, that guy was like, 
That made my job so much easier. I'm gonna go my way, Kyle. Like six inches. Yeah. Well, that's an, yeah, that's enough. Uh, I'll settle for two inches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then rotate. Oh, I, I just love you guys. <laughs> okay, Noah, here's what I want you to do. Let's, um, if you have the impactor, mm -hmm. let's run a couple of... Um, red screws? Red screws, yeah. Because the chances... And then let's do one more. Like right here. Yeah. Oh man, my knees are just killing me. Telling me. Cool. So if we do Kyle's side, and then what we'll do, Noah, is we'll go in the middle and we'll push it straight. We're gonna match that wall, because we know the wall is plumb. Yeah. Then at least this guy will be will be nice and straight. No, it really doesn't. Uh, yeah, go ahead and do it, Noah. Okay. Go ahead and let go. I'll just. <laughs> so now, Noah, if you could go this joist on the wall from the black line we just snapped, if you can measure over 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two. But it's just one more thing that's locked in. Okay, now we'll try to do this other beam. This one should be easier because we can go over the top of that wall. Rothberg Rigid Lamb. That means they make it out of lamb. Whoa. Yeah, I think it's like the uh, the bones of a lamb are known as for being really strong. Oh, oh man. my gosh. Okay, on the count of three, you push and I'll go up and pull. <laughs> I need you right here. All right. <laughs> One, two, three, up. There we go. I okay. I will mark it. Good old LVL. Stuff always wants to like bind, like Amanda bind on me. Yeah. So we're rotating that way, okay. Uno, dos, tres. I got like nothing. No. It's gotta be on that side of the line. Yeah. Cause that was our snap line. So we'll screw this side, Noah, and then we'll screw Kyle's side. And then I wanna go check that wall. Cause we'll have to pull a measurement to get the other uh, hangers in. And you can do his side first too. I, I don't really care. You know, it just hits, hey, we have the world's most insane sheetrock backing on that side. <laughs> <laughs> I love those things, man. Nah, we'll just go, let's go do his side. Okay, I'm gonna turn off that camera. Yep. Okay, so that guy I do not want to nail. There are about seven quintillion ways you could have done this. Plus or minus a billion. This just worked out better to do it this way. Once we knew we were gonna hang the plank, that's inch and a half rigid lamb. No, it is not made from the bones of a lamb. That was just a hilarious joke I told on YouTube one time. Well, on the job site. I am attaching it to the flanges top and bottom. Then what I'm going to do, well, you're gonna see it. You're gonna see it. Remember I snapped the line inch and five eighths. The LVL is inch and a half, but often when it gets wet, it might swell. This stuff, of course, did not swell. <laughs> so we have a little bit of room to play with and that is okay. Don't forget that our subfloor is going to be nailed to the LVL six inches on center. And then of course we're gonna be All nailing right. to the uh, 
eye joists themselves, either six inches on the seams or 12 inches in the field. So definitely gonna keep that very well connected. I'm tapping it out so that it's nice and flush. We took all the effort to brace this wall straight. So I want the LVL to match that. Now, according to the International Residential Code, I have to nail six inches on center, toe nailing through the LVL into the plate below. All of that helps to transfer lateral loads down, keeps the uh, floor system from sliding, if you will. Of course, we're gonna sheathe these walls with zip systems, so once the whole thing is attached, redundancy, redundancy. It's not just for the, uh, it's not just for NASA. It's good for us to be redundant too. Okay, I don't, something doesn't look right here, you guys. Did I? So this layout is correct. What do you have, Noah? I have, um, I'm 16. Did I lay out your, your uh, joist wrong? Budding? Okay. Okay, so then the next one is 25-ish. Yep. And then like 40 and 15, 40 and 14. So those those three got done wrong. So the first two are right. You wanna race? I will win. Hey man, at least they're inch and a half. I know. It's like, wow, it's so much easier. I feel like my tombstone should say, like, here lies Timmy. Are you even framing if you're not pulling nails? That sounded a lot funnier in my head, but <laughs> it's often true. Oh man. Okay, well, I showed it. It happens to the best of us. And I am not the best of us, but it happens to them. All right, so here's the time lapse of those last joists going in. Where Kyle's at, we're just a little like four footers rim across the stairway. Let's do some more rim. Okay. Okay. So keep it close <coughs> to the end of the wall? Huh? Keep it close to the end of the wall? No, to your layout marks. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Layout, baby. It is all about the layout and the base. All about the base and the layout. Because it's all about that base. And the layout. And the layout. And the base. See, isn't that way better to set the rim at waist height? They're 16 foot long, inch and a half LVL, so they're not the lightest well, things on the planet. If I was standing on top of the joist, well, that wouldn't work. If I tried to stand between the joists, well, that wouldn't work real well. What we would have done is we would have set all of the rim while the joists were flat. That is the other way to do it, and oftentimes I will do that. It's the way it goes. It's just the way it goes. I'm sorry, Noah. I don't I don't I don't treat you like you're stupid because you're stupid. It's cause I'm kinda stupid. Well, we all have our moments. With this XP nailer, you cannot bounce fire. So I'm literally pulling the trigger, 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 trigger. I'm pulling the trigger, pulling the trigger each time. But you can still get into a pretty fast rhythm. It's just the way it <coughs> is. I flushed it up on the far end. Now, since the rim's there, I'm not gonna take a measurement. I, I can do this. Also, I can use a saw that's way too big for this. It was the only saw I had hanging up there for those LVLs. So honestly, that saw is only like 14 pounds. So it's still lighter than those old skills that we all learned how to use back in the 80s and 90s. Um, oh, one, one other thing. Notice that I have some of those joists hangered with inch and three quarter LVL right above that doorway. I think it's pretty self-explanatory why. The sliding glass door is just tall. They put a transom in. It was ordered before we had wall heights figured out with the slab and all that stuff. And hey, we're gonna make it work. So we just basically 
inch and three quarter LVL is the structural member, hangers. This is a very common detail in so-called quote unquote advanced framing. That way you can save header material, get more insulation, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna go ahead and then nail the inch and a half LVL into it so we are plenty strong. There will be no sagging there. Same process, top flanges, bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and just toenail six inches on center. As was mentioned, that is in the International Residential Code. On those lower windows, kind of over where the camera was at, you'll see that we have one extra plate above the window. That is just because a mistake got made and instead of recutting all the trimmers in the windows, the guys just added that. I would have preferred that they just recut the trimmers, but it doesn't matter. It's like four windows, so. And the only reason I care is because then I get questions on Instagram and YouTube and I have to explain it. Ah, I'm out of gas. I need fuel, Noah. No, I need, I need fuel, stat. Woo, woo, woo. I like what you do when you do. Yeah. Okay. I like what you do when you do what you do. I like. What you do when you do what you do, you make me want to shoot. I've been thinking about releasing an album that, that Timmy sings the hits elevator music style. I'm sure it would be a bestseller. It would be a free download, let's be honest. All right. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Actually, it wouldn't be elevator music style. It'd be more like lounge lizard, you know, like throw back to the 50s. Crooner, croon. I would be croon. I would be crooning the hits. They would, yeah. Pretty doggone straight, man. Yes, I know there was still a slight gap between those two LVLs. I don't care. Oh, the drone landed itself. Man, I kind of wanted footage of this. And there is the floor, all framed. The guys got the garage floor sheathed the uh, afternoon of the day before this. This was a Friday, beautiful weather. Start out really cold, but with that sun out, perfect to start sheathing the floor. There is the view, again, of the joists flush with the top of the mudsill, the garage six inches low, the side walls framed to the height of the top of the rim, the joists continuous front to back. It was great, they didn't have to split on walls and then blocking over the walls that required it. And how do I know which ones need it? Because it's on the plan. There is one wall under that first row that we're gonna frame later as dry work, and it also will have blocks on top of it. We could have done it now, but we just were like, let's take advantage of the good weather and let's get to sheathing this thing. So you'll, you'll see as we go, there's gonna be things that jump out to you as the viewer that's like, hey, why didn't you do this now? It's simply, simply to make it easier. Either, either it's a little easier to do it later, or it's just because we wanted to save that work for inside work. Um, no real rocket science to it. Can't really think of much more to say. I guess there's the three and a half inch LVLs that run front to back. That defines the stairway. Stay tuned for a video on that. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate it. As of today, doing the voiceover, it is, Mar what is today? March 2nd? I think it's March 2nd. And as you can see from the sunshine, life is about to get a whole lot better. Thanks for following along, everybody.